Hello everybody! <laughs> Today we are going in the depth of our origin. I've got a wonderful chance to talk to Locke Rules, the founder of Epic Quests, and I'm going to ask him some questions. Hello Locke! Hello, thank you for having me. Um, I, I remember when I used to do a lot of the intros, I would um, do something like this, and I'm going to try and do it. <laughs> but um, it's been a few years. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. Oh does, does, is that, does that sound about right? This right? sounds perfect. I have <laughs> <laughs> such a nostalgia. I, I remember I used to watch uh, those videos uh, back, I, I think, five years ago. And I was really fascinated because you were showing uh, some things that I could only dream about. Lord of the Rings, this was my ultimate uh, story. I, I loved that more than anything else. It was my hobby. And you were showing some depictions of the movies and the books as well in Minecraft. Uh, available for everybody. Well, it was very exciting. Thank you for... Thank you for saying that. Um, it, it, it's, it's humbling um, that maybe I inspired you and, and maybe some others as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess my, my story sort of starts back when Minecraft first came out. Um, I may be wrong with the dates, but I want to say Minecraft came out around 2010. Um, and, it, you know, it took a few months, but late 2010 um, to early 2011 uh, I started playing Minecraft uh, at the time it was an only single player game uh, multiplayer wasn't a thing but I, I played it on sort of survival mode and, and fell in love with the game and it was probably maybe around November 2021 I want to say I seem to remember it was around um, it was around Halloween time uh, of 20, 2011, um, a lot of the friends that I had in school were all playing Minecraft uh, in, in the playground. We were all sort of talking about the game. And we sort of thought, as soon as multiplayer comes out, we're all going to have one big server that we're all going to play on. And um, that's what we did. And it was a server that I had in, in my bedroom. It was on my old computer. Uh, it wasn't a very powerful computer at all. Um, it was pretty uh, underpowered, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I remember it used to lag a lot when there was multiple people on the server. But uh, we got by. Um, at the time, multiplayer survival wasn't a thing. It was creative only on multiplayer. Um, but what we had in mind was to try and, and make different locations. We thought that if there's all of us sort of together... Uh, on creative mode, we could um, recreate a, a lot of different things. Um, originally, uh, the channel Epic Quest wasn't a thing, uh, but one of my friends from school had a YouTube channel. Um, that YouTube channel was My Technology, um, which I can send you a link for. Um, and on that channel, we used to post some of the maps we were creating. Uh, the first map we made was Hogwarts from Harry Potter. And it it was just videos we would post on the channel, which was um, a lot of the work I was making. And, and this was very early days, so my skills as a builder uh, has improved. But it, it was just me and a few people from school uh, making a few different maps, trying to make something large scale, which started off trying to do Hogwarts. Uh, we never actually finished Hogwarts, but we, um, we, we got a fair way through. And I think we made five videos on his channel uh, showing off the map and then eventually we decided we're going to make a city and that's when we made things like uh, the Burj Al Arab which was posted on our Planet Minecraft page and uh, Titanic we made that as well uh, those were probably the first taste at trying to make something uh, a bit a bit bigger a bit more detailed and um, then we decided that me and one other friend from, from school were going to have a go at trying to make uh, Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings. So we had, a, we had a go at trying to make Hogwarts. That didn't really go very well. Uh, we made Burj Al Arab, and, and that, you know, was, was decent. And we made a few other, like, city-like structures. And we got the hang of using things like uh, World Editor um, 
And then we thought, well, let's try and make something really big. Let's try with Minas Tirith. We'll go for probably the hardest thing you could possibly make in Lord of the Rings. Um, and uh, at the same time as making that, we were also um, making some of the city. Um, but it wasn't until we had the first release on um, on Planet Minecraft that we needed to come up with a name. And I thought well, we need to come up with something a bit fantasy related. Um, some of the maps we're making, at the time at least, weren't just Lord of the Rings related. So I wanted something that wasn't specific to just Lord of the Rings. And I just came up with the name Epic Quest. And it sounded kind of cool. Uh, and it kind of stuck. And uh, me and my friend Sam, um, we released Minas Tirith. Um, and at the time, it was just me flying around the city, trying to do the best they possibly could at making a cinematic shot. But the laptop I was playing on at the time wasn't very powerful. Um, if you've seen that first video, uh, you'll know how um, how bad my computer was at rendering. And it lagged a lot as well. I was getting such a low FPS. But it didn't stop me from releasing that video. And it got a few thousand views. It was some some real interest because I think at the time when we released it, no one had really done anything like that before. So we were, you know, we were we were, we were innovators in in releasing this sort of thing. This was sort of late 2011, early 2012. So there wasn't very much in the way of big projects being produced of Minecraft. And um, yeah, it, it picked up. It got a bit of attention. And yeah, it sort of blossomed from there. Uh, we decided because of the popularity to try and make other maps. Uh, we made um, Helm's Deep. Um, we made Isengard. Sort of all, all the big landmarks we could think of. Um, until I eventually met uh, Tim on the Empire War server, who was using some of our maps uh, for his um, for his server. And, and, and that's when I met Tim. And because Tim had a powerful server it meant i didn't have to host it on my computer anymore so it, it also meant that um we got more people interested in building as well and the team kind of grew from there and became epic quest as it is today all right Tim, do you remember at around what uh year team joined you or you joined i want team? to s mm, yeah i mean I, I think it was a bit of a merger i think it was i want to say 2013 I think it was, I want to say 2013. Um, so by this point, we've been making a few different maps. Um, I mean, bearing in mind, this is just me and one other person. So the projects we were releasing uh, came out quite slowly. And um, we were doing different things at the same time. Um, some things we never actually ended up releasing because we didn't think they were any good. But um, we were just releasing different projects. But... We sort we posted them all on a site called Planet Minecraft, which I'm sure everyone knows, um, and um, some of them got quite popular. And um, whenever anyone ever asked, "Oh, can I use um, this map for my server?" I, it was always a yes. You know, as long as you're giving us credit, we're more than happy for people to use our maps. I guess the philosophy from the start was um, everything we're doing is just for the love of the game. If anyone wants to use our work, they're more than welcome to. That's why we always uh, provided downloads for people to, to download a lot of the earlier maps. And um, yeah, we, we, we just were more than happy for people to use it. And I got a message from Tim on, on Planet Minecraft saying, hi, I have a, you know, a small server. At the time it was a very small server and um, I, I love Lord of the Rings and I want to try and use your maps on my server. And at the time, I think the maps he chose to use was our version of Helm's Deep and also our Minas Tirith map. And um, yeah, he posted those on his, um, on his server and it was a full PvP siege game. And I thought it was fantastic. And I used to go on the server all the time uh, after I after I saw how he was using the maps. I thought it was fantastic because I'd never really seen anything like that before. Um, so Tim and I became quite good friends. Um, we, we spoke every day 
and, and developed a, a really good friendship. And um, from his community, um, my maps and his coding and his server, it, it blossomed into more people getting interest in um, the building side of things. And we managed to grow a building team off the basis of the PvP server and people wanting to get into the building. Mm-hmm. Mm, I always thought you were uh, not just two friends, but uh, three or four. Um, but coming back yeah. on the subject of uh, innovation and kind mm-hmm. of the big projects, uh, I think you were indeed uh, pioneers, I, I would like to say, of uh, huge, impressive builds. And it was new at the time, indeed. And even today, in 2021, 10 years later, uh, when you Google uh, Minecraft Ministerith, uh, your Ministerith is still the most popular Ministerith there is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you're right there. There's been quite a lot of people that have made um, Ministerith, but the original, um, in its blocky glory, uh, it is. Um, it, it's got. It's got something about it. Um, you, you mentioned about more people being on the project, and uh, there were. Um, I mean, the friendship group I had that we would all play Minecraft on on my original server. There was quite a lot of us, but it was only really me and Sam that got into the building of the Lord of the Rings type things. So people that know Epic Quest uh, and have followed it for a long time and remember me will probably remember Elliot and James and, and their in-game names was uh, Dino Pickle and Speedy Cheese. Um, they were part of the server group, but they weren't much in the way of builders. They were entertaining people that I used to play the game with and I would film videos with, but they never really helped out too much when it came to the building side of things. Um, that was me and my friend Sam. Um, Sam never really wanted to get behind the camera. Um, so Sam isn't really seen uh, on voice in any of the videos. Uh, he was just a little bit shy. But Sam had a major role behind the scenes when it came to building all, all of the projects. Um, to be honest, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have had the... Um, I probably wouldn't have been pushed to make some of these maps it was him saying yes we can do it Let, let's make this big project and and giving that encouragement that meant that these maps even got made in the first place so um he, you know he is the reason at epic quest started as if it wasn't for him i don't know if i would have ever dreamed that something like making minas tariff would have been possible i never knew that uh, what is Sam's uh, in-game name? Maybe uh, he's known. Um, it was Sam underscore Dunn one nine nine five, I believe. Um, he occasionally would go on uh, the Epic Quest uh, servers and um, the Empire War, but he did definitely did take a. Um, I'd say maybe like twenty thirteen is when he stopped uh, being active which unfortunately was around about the time that Epic Quest itself started growing as much of a uh, community and the team sort of grew. Um, He ended up sort of moving on to different things, getting bored of the game of Minecraft entirely. But um, it was him that sort of helped start everything. And then he sort of slowly drifted away, which, you know, is perfectly fine. People um, fall out of the love of the game. Um, I mean, unfortunately, um, I've done that sort of maybe in 2016 um, as I sort of got a bit older and um, real life sort of took control um, and um, I didn't have as much time anymore uh, to play Minecraft, which is a bit of a shame. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that happened to him, but it just happened a bit bit earlier than it did for me. But you've... Uh, been building with him uh, a lot and uh, I would like yeah I mean the projects he worked on was Minas Tirith um, Helm's Deep and I want to say Isengard was the three projects he worked on uh, with me as well as also um, before that which was the Titanic and Burj Al Arab Um, you know he, he helped out with some of the city 
tours and the uh, Hogwarts tours. Uh, those ones weren't part of the Epic Quest channel at any point. But as I as I mentioned, I think earlier in in on our in the interview, the My Technology channel is where we posted a lot of the earlier work. So if anyone's sort of interested in in how um, you know we started and and how the sort of the server originally formed. Um, he was helping out in a lot of, you know, the earlier stuff, um, but not necessarily the, the the later projects that we worked on. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite project among the ones that you built with Sam and the, maybe the ones uh, you built without him later? Um, as far as, I mean, Minister of has to be my, my favorite all-time project. Um, and that was the first one that me and Sam made together. As far as um, after, um, it's got to be... Oh, it's difficult. I think Brie had a... Um, you know, something about Brie that I really enjoyed uh, building Brie. Um, I think that was sort of the highlight I had um, of being in the community, was working on that project. Um, but I, I do also... Um, really like um some of the projects we worked from like the the hobbit movie uh things like dale was um something that i really enjoyed um being a part of but um but yeah it, it's possibly um it's possibly brie just for an enjoyment of being involved with the community and making a project with everyone and being involved in um you know making some of the houses and because that was a very much a group effort. Everyone sort of made, you know, one um, one place each. Um, it wasn't like one person did all of the work. It was a, more of a community effort, and I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, and also, Minister, if I think that was one thing that I started just before um, I, I, I sort of drifted away, was I was trying to remake Minister because... When I made it and started making it in 2011, by 2016, five years later, it, it didn't have that same quality. That that project unfortunately never got finished. Um, we were, were maybe only about a third of the way through remaking Minas Tirith, and that project unfortunately just got benched. And I imagine if I looked at it now, or anyone looked at it now, they would think that the quality just isn't there. Um, and just from something I was making in 2016. Uh, we've also been trying to remake Minas Tirith indeed, and we've uh, checked out the old Minas Tirith, the one you yeah. built with Sam, and the one you just mentioned. And I must say that uh, there is a huge improvement of quality. Well, I feel like uh, there was a huge improvement. And to be honest, even by uh, today's standards, it's quite decent. Uh, somebody who um, showed uh, one house from uh, the new ministry that you uh, started but didn't finish would be enough to to be accepted in the team if he showed it in the portfolio. <laughs> well, I'm glad if I was to apply it today, I might get accepted into the team. But um, but yeah, I mean, the, the stuff we made in, in 2011 was, was very, very basic just because... We hadn't really developed as, as builders. I mean, I I definitely developed uh, over the course of uh, five years that I was part of, of making um, making Middle Earth projects. But the reason it was so basic when we made it was just one: it was a time thing. You know, we we're making a massive, massive structure, a massive city with only two people. Uh, and secondly, it's the amount of blocks we had to our disposal at the time. As I mentioned, we were making it out of wall originally. Um, and then later we um, we converted it all into quartz just because we felt that it, it looked a bit better. And um, also things like half slabs, as I mentioned, wasn't a thing when we originally started the project because um, the people behind the game just kept adding new blocks to, uh, you know, to, to, for, our, for our use as we were going. And uh, we also had an issue with um, with the height limit. Um, that was something that originally... Um, I can't remember exactly what it was. 
uh, some people that know um, are keeping up to date might might know. But when we originally started the project, there was uh, a restriction to how much you could build, and then they actually extended it and made it um, so that you could build higher. Um, but originally, when we started the project, we had to use um, we had to use at, like mods that allowed us to build higher than the height restrictions. And then uh, they eventually made it in the game so that that wasn't a requirement anymore. Um, but, but yeah, it, it just, the game kept evolving as we were building. And um, the game continues to evolve even to this day. So what was considered a, you know a, an impressive structure 10 years ago um, doesn't really live up today. If someone was to probably release Minas Tirith as I made it now, uh, I can't imagine it getting very pop. I can't imagine people thinking it was particularly good or, or being particularly popular. Mm, I think it would still have uh, a lot of attention because it's still uh, a big scale project, a massive project. But anyway, um, coming to a, qu- a couple of last questions. Um, obviously, by 2016, you were uh, fading away and at some point you disappeared completely. Uh, in fact, the last time you've been seen on our YouTube channel was 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, how did you uh, get to fade away? Um, well, life, I, I think, is the honest answer. Um, I have, well, it, it, it's, it's a sad story to tell, really, but as I got a bit older, I'm... I'm 26, for anyone that didn't know. Um, so I originally started with Epic Quest while I was uh, in school. So I live in the UK. Um, when I started making things like Minas Tirith, I was in sick form. Um, so, you know, 17, 16 years old. And um, by by 2015, uh, I started uh, a job working in a bank. And um, it was quite a sort of stressful job and it meant I didn't have as much time to do things like playing Minecraft and um, I think I I knew that I wasn't able to put in the time I wanted to to carry on with these projects and something had to to give and unfortunately um, I I took a break from Minecraft and uh, I never was able to really return um, I am doing well in life, though. I, I'm, I'm, I'm currently engaged, and I'm getting married next year. Uh, and I think I'm doing quite well in work. I'm still in the same bank, and I've been promoted a few times. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, um, I just got got a bit old, and um, I had to focus on what at the time was important, which is um, my work outside of Minecraft. You had to let Minecraft pleasure go to to grow in life. I'm I'm so excited for you, man! Congratulations. Uh, Thank you, thank uh, you. Um, so yes, uh, my my fiance is is in the room with me at the moment. Uh, she's giving me a a look. Um, but yeah, um, I I do still follow the channel. I do still follow the server. Um, I just I know that if I was to try and play again, uh, the addiction would get hold of me. And um, that is part of the reason why I haven't uh, decided to return properly because um, because I yeah I, I, I would get addicted and um, I'm not in the position at the moment to be able to do that. I, I work about 70 hours a week uh, at the present time um, with the job I do. So um, yeah, I wouldn't really be able to have time to play the game and still uh, fulfill all of my work commitments. Mm-hmm. Games are fun, but uh, indeed you have to, yeah. to care more about life. Uh, our main motto uh, in the community um, is life before the game. So uh, real life comes first, um, which is sort of also the uh, justification for inactivity. But in the end, it's good because it pays off. Uh, it is clearly seen uh, with your engagement in your promotions. Um, it is a super. I'm super happy to hear such things. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we're... I I do get addicted in the things I do, and 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 to be honest with you, um, that's possibly paid off in work. Um, I I you know put a hundred percent into the things I do, and and that's meant that I've been able to progress up a little bit at work, and I've been able to get a few promotions, and I probably put in more hours into work than uh, is maybe healthy. Um, working seventy hours a week, I, I don't really recommend it, but um, th- yeah, that's what I choose to do. Uh, for something that I, I, you know, want to, I want to try and put a lot of passion into. Mm-hmm. When you were, um, well, uh, leaving Epic Quest, sort of, did you see it um, still being a legacy carried on by uh, the uh, rest of the community, or did you think it would slowly die? Or uh... I, I, I truly hoped it wouldn't die. And I could see that Epic Quest was in really good hands and the community had grown so much. I didn't need to have uh, a driving force in it anymore because people were starting projects on their own. Um, you know, they, they didn't need me there anymore. People were making things better than I could make them myself. There was so much talent in the community. And I truly believe some of the, the people that, you know, true big, big respect to those people yeah so there was some real people in the community that um were able to make some fantastic and amazing builds um some real like truly dedicated players that were making stuff that i wouldn't be able to make myself so i knew that even if i was taking a step back um at least at the time i knew that the community was going to continue in 2016 I was I was working, um, you know, a, a serious full time job. I, I wasn't really having too much of a hand when it came to the builds, but I was still making YouTube videos, so I was still trying to post regularly. So a lot of the videos that I was showing off in in 2016 weren't necessarily things I was making, but it was things the community was making, and I, I knew that even if I wasn't there, um, they were going to continue. And and you've proved that we're here. 10 years later, I haven't been really active for the last five of those years. Mm-hmm. And you still managed to produce so much about me. I'm, I'm just happy it, it uh, despite your um, uh, inactivity, could live uh, as much as it did uh, during your era. So five years, five years, <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> Um, do you still keep in touch with any former or active EpiQuest mm. members? Um, as not, <laughs> unfortunately, not as much as I would like. I'm in touch with the people that were there from the very, very beginning. So I'm talking mm. like when we first started in, in 2011. Mm-hmm. People like Sam, I still keep in touch with. Uh, people like uh, Elliot and, um, and James. So Diana Pickle and Speedy Cheese, I'm still in touch with. Um, time to time, I might speak to someone like Tim. But apart from that, I, I can't say I speak to, to anyone in the community, which is a real shame because there's um, there's too many people to, to name. But there are some um, some people that I would like to just speak to again. And I would just like to say that if anyone of them are watching now and you remember me from... Uh, 2016 or before that even um, feel please feel free to message me uh, I, I'd love to, to get back in touch with some of you again if you're still interested in um, speaking to me I really hope they will see this <laughs> uh, so anything else you would like to say maybe some words or uh, questions uh, that you would like to ask as well um well, I I think we we spoke before beginning uh, this recording, so I know sort of what the community's been getting up to. Uh, but I would just like to just emphasize that if you enjoy playing Minecraft and, and making projects, just keep doing it. It doesn't necessarily matter how people will react to what you've made, or if you think people can build better than you. Just do it for the pure enjoyment of building and being creative and uh, making something. Um, I think it is really important to do that because I think when I was playing Minecraft, it got me through a period that 
um, was quite depressing. Um, I had a period where I was, you know, quite depressed, and playing Minecraft got me through that. Um, when I would have a, you know, a bad day, I would just go on the game and forget about everything, and um, and just build, and it was just relaxing for me. And it doesn't matter if you know, you, you maybe you're not experiencing anything like that, and it's just an outlet for you to to just relax. I, I think it's a fantastic game, and um, I know Minecraft an awful lot. Those are brilliant words, and I truly mean it. Uh, this re actually remind me one last question I wanted to ask. Um, I wanted to ask what was the impact Epic Quests uh, and like the five or uh, so years uh, have done to you. Well, I, I think I've touched on it briefly there. I think it's got me through a period of my life that, um, you know, wasn't wasn't too great. I, I you know it got me through a period of depression um, to be part of Epic Quest, and there wasn't really something I've I've shared with anyone in the community at the time. But there was a period of my life when I finished school and I didn't really know what I was going to do in life, and um, being part of the community helped me through that. It gave me confidence, and possibly I developed a lot of leadership skills um, through being part of the community as well. Uh, I got to do some some great things. I went to um, Minecon in London, um, and I got to meet part of the community there as well, which was fantastic. Uh, Tim came over to, to England for the first time, and I got to meet him. Um, and I've met some some great and fantastic people through this game. So it's had a real lasting impression on me because of that. Thank you so, so much for uh, your time, for uh answering all these questions. Um, I'm really happy we could talk today. Well, thank you for having me. And um, thank you everyone for, for being a, a fan of Epic Quests.